Welcome to the Financial Fun Podcast with your host, Tammy Johnston. This is where Tammy talks with business owner parents and grandparents about the interesting and important subject of money. We promise this to be an interesting and open discussion, as that's how we learn best. And now, here's your host, author of the Financial Foundations. Financial Foundations is a series of books to teach kids about money, goal setting, and living a balanced life. Find out more at financialfund.ca. Here's Tammy Johnston. First things first, I would like to thank all of my listeners that have subscribed and reviewed my podcast and invite you to subscribe and review if you haven't yet. I appreciate you helping us to get the word out and making financial literacy a safe and welcoming subject for kids and adults. Second, please check out my podcast website, financialfund.ca, where you will be able to access past shows, find out more about me and our guests, as well as purchase the beautifully illustrated Financial Foundations books that teach kids about money in a fun, healthy, and holistic way. Hello, and thank you for joining us once again for the Financial Fun Podcast. Today, our guest is the brilliant and vibrant Bridget Lazard DL. Thank you for joining us, Bridget. Hello, Tammy. How are you? I'm enjoying the beginning of the year and the fresh start and looking forward to exciting things happening in 2017. I know, same here, and I'm being told that it's a number one this year, so it's all about new beginnings and starting fresh. Yes, and and the uh, year of the rooster, which is also supposed to be a very positive, fresh start thing. So I'm hoping that it all comes true. <laughs> Woohoo! We are ready for a really good year. It's going to be fun. It is. So would you like to tell our listeners about what you do? What is your business, Bridget? Well, I, um, I've been an entrepreneur for most of my life. I like to call myself a serial entrepreneur. I've owned so many different businesses. And right now, the two businesses that I'm involved in is one is an internet business called sportsbras.ca. And Obviously, we sell sports bras, and we like to say we give you less bounce for your buck. <laughs> yes, pun intended. <laughs> and uh, the other business that I own is Women Talk, and it's uh, an event-based business. We're in six cities across Alberta, and uh, we host monthly events where women come and share their stories. Six cities already. I know we are. Well, I'm kind of lying a little bit. Our sixth one is launching next month. So, but yeah, we're going to be by February, second week in February, we're going to be in six cities. Well, that's very impressive because I remember when you first started it, which wasn't that long ago. Uh, we started our monthly one a year and a half ago. Yeah. So obviously it's going well. It is going really, really well. We found, um, you know, kind of a niche market that we're, you know, we do something very different than anybody else. We're not about business. We're not about networking. We're simply ordinary women sharing their extraordinary stories. But of course, like any other time where people meet, um, a lot of business does happen, but that is not our focus. Business is all about relationships, and if you're building them, it will come. So it's all good. Yeah, I find it very interesting because a lot of people are discovering that because I think sometimes we're a little too focused on doing business and going out to do business. And, you know, sometimes if you just go out to just meet people and make friends and give people an opportunity to get to know you, then the business comes your way. The other, When you do it the other way around, you know, sometimes it's harder. Oh, it's much harder. It's kind of like uh, in, in, in racing, if you're doing the skill driving, in order to go faster, you need to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, sh- I, need- I still need to learn that lesson, I think. <laughs> and what is your family situation, Bridget? Well, I am married, and I'm actually married to another female, and we have two kids together. One is seven, and one is ten years old. And the ten-year-old is a girl, and the seven is a boy. Oh, so you're getting you're getting the fun age. You have you haven't hit the uh, the heavy duty preteen years or the teenager stuff yet. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, my ten-year-old though is pushing it. Woo! <laughs> She is getting there fast. Oh, and she's not going to be slowing down at all. <laughs> I know, I know. It gets a little scary. As a matter of fact, uh, both of them lost a tooth. 
um, la yesterday. So, of course, we do the tooth fairy thing. And this morning, you know, there was no scream of joy from the money under her pillow. And I was thinking, oh, my little baby is gone. I've got like almost a teenager here. She's kind of like, yeah, right, the tooth fairy. <laughs> but she did take the money. Oh, they always take the money, dear. They always take the money. <laughs> the money is always welcome, no matter how old you are. As a matter of fact, I'm quite willing to believe in a tooth fairy if I'm going to get money. <laughs> so thinking back to like when you were a kid and stuff, when did you first start realizing like money and that it was important? Um, my parents never really um, thought me how to um, save my money or invest my money. Like it was not something that was talked about in my house. And I'm 51 years old, and I think that people from my generation, it, like people just didn't talk to their kids like we do now. I first started managing my money, of course, when I started babysitting. And I had quite a good little business going on right off the bat. I lived in suburbia and uh, quite often I was booked quite a long time ahead. So um, it was it was uh, really enjoyable to, to start making my own money, you know. And what were some of the things that you were excited about spending your money on? Well, one of the first thing I did was get a haircut by a hairdresser. Oh, <laughs> And that was a really big deal for me because, you know, the good old uh, 70s haircut with long at the back and the really, really short bangs. <laughs> and that was one of my biggest joy the first time that uh, I had enough money and I went to the hairdresser and paid for my own haircut. And it was very rewarding, actually. I completely remember that. Yeah, give, giving you that feeling of control. Yeah, and being able to decide, you know, this is what I want and I'm paying for it and I can do whatever the heck I want. I remember as well, uh, I was playing guitar and we were going for a big concert. Like I, I grew up in Quebec and we were going to Ottawa for a concert and I wanted to be independent and uh, wanted to take the bus up there and not drive with my parents. So I had to sell chocolate bars. And, of course, living in suburbia, like the houses were really, really spread out. Like I would have had to walk miles and miles and miles. And my, I think it was my grandmother's sister. I didn't really know her all that well, but she passed away. And I went to the funeral home. And I'm so embarrassed to say this, but I have to share this because it was quite funny. I had all my aunts, my uncle, and everybody's there feeling kind of sad. And then I thought, I wonder if they'd be interested in buying chocolate bars right now. <laughs> and I sold, I sold every single bar at the funeral home. <laughs> so I think it was my first experience of emotional buying with people, you know? <laughs> location, location, location. I remember it being, it's been passed around on Facebook a few times. But a girl guide set, or a girl scout down in the state set up her, her, her cookie stand outside of a pot store in Colorado. And she sold like hundreds of boxes in a few hours. Brilliant. That's just as good as going to a funeral home with chocolates. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just, it, it's the ingenuity and the innocence of kids. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, truly. Like, I just, you know, I kind of connected the two together, and you don't realize, well, I mean, I mean, you couldn't do that as an adult, of course, but as a kid, you, you're able to squeeze some stuff in that you wouldn't be able to as an adult. Yeah, being a, being a minor gives you a little bit of license. <laughs> yeah, although some people never quite get there to realize that it's not the, really, like, you should not be doing that. <laughs> So with, with your kids and stuff, like you were talking about your daughter is, is not so excited about the tooth fairy, but she still is very happy about the money. What are some of the things that you're, you're noticing with your, your son and your daughter about, around the subject of money? Like what are the questions they're asking and things like that? Well, one of the very interesting thing that I've noticed right away is the difference in spending habits. And and it's very interesting to see it's not a learned behavior because they're both coming from the same place, same parents, same environment, but how they react to it. Like one has his money spent, or, or little guy's got his money spent before he 
he even gets it. <laughs> and, and the other one is saving all of her money for, you know, when she decides she wants to buy something. So it's quite intriguing on how your personality will really dictate a lot of your relationship with money, I think. Oh, huge. And it's, it's so common when I'm talking with people, parents that have more than one child. I, mine's simple. I have one. But yeah, they'll have, maybe, I've even talked to people, they have twins. So as close as you can get, and they will have completely different personalities when it comes to money. Yeah. And, and what we've done is, um, you know, we've tried a few different techniques with them, like where it's an allowance and you have to do chores or, and um, the the latest one that we've done, like I kind of felt that, you know, I don't want to pay them for helping around the house because that's just part of living in a house. You know, we all share the chores. And so what I started doing now is they get a certain amount of money and that's they can do whatever they want with it. But if they want to go to a party and they have to buy a birthday gift to go to the party, it has to come out of that allowance. So if you've gone out and spent all your money and you have no money to go to the party, well, then you can't go to the party. And and really, that's that's what I want them to to realize with the money. You know, like there's things in life that if you're spending it all on candies, then you won't be able to do the party or whatever else, whatever else could come up. So how did how did they manage that, like you say, your daughter, your daughter's the, the 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 saver and all that, but your your youngest is more more of the spender. So how how do you work with them to balance and prepare for that? Like some of them, uh, some of the money, of course, like there's birthday money and Christmas money, and quite often they'll get gift cards. And I mean, the moment Luke gets his gift card, he is running to Toys R Us and wanting to buy whatever the item is hot at the time for him. And, well, Ali will, you know, well, I don't really have anything right now, so I'll keep it. And she actually, the other day, her brother had already spent all of his money, and she decided that she was going to give him some money so he could buy the, I think it was a Monster High doll or whatever he wanted to buy. (laughs) And she gave him some money so he would have enough to buy the doll. But then, of course came back at him and said, you know, I gave you money to buy that doll, so you have to be nice to me now. <laughs> and, and how does that work out? And, you know, it's like touch and go. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. <laughs> and we've had, um, you know, we so how we've done it with the money that we give them every week is that we have a book, and we actually write it in the book. I um, I'm not like we used to be worried a little bit about like actual money, but I think our kids are not going to deal that much with real money anyway. Um, um, so my wife was wanting to give them like actual dollars or loonies and then go to the bank and deposit it at the bank so they get a feel for it. And, you know, I was saying they're not going to do that. Like, I don't even know if they'll be like actual money, money by the time they're 25, you know. So we started using a book where we keep, um, you know, we write in there the money that they get in. And then when they, like, for example, at school, they have pizza day, hot dog day and all that. So we give them enough so that, you know, if they buy all of it, they'll run out of money and won't be able to go to a birthday party. So, So they have to make decisions. So, So how do you and your wife figure out how much to give the kids? Uh, yeah, actually, we were just talking about that. Not to, like we, that's the thing, right? So we say, okay, so they buy pizza a couple times a month. So that's like 15 bucks or whatever that is. And let's count in a birthday party. So that's another 20 bucks uh, or whatever. Right. And then, um, a couple of extras. So I can't remember now what we were just talking. So we increase it. So we make it so that there's just enough. So that if they do want extra, something else has to give. Because I think that's what life is all about, right? You you want something and, and you can't afford all of it. So you have to take it off something else so that you can. And, and we have given Luke loans. Do they come up with when, okay, well, I want, I, I want some extra money. Have, have they developed any entrepreneurial spirit? <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah, like they've done the lemonade stand, and they're still fairly young, right? Like the oldest is ten, and and I can see that they may they may come up with stuff. The one thing that happened, we were in uh, Disney. We went to, we went to Orlando just before the holidays, and our daughter is an absolute animal freak. Like she is a cat girl. Like she wants to become a vet and. And we happened to find out about a cat cafe. Oh, I've heard of those. Calgary's supposed to be getting one. Yeah, yeah, not very long from us. So we went off to the cat cafe, figured, you know, enjoyed a couple of hours there, and they were excited. And it was so cute to see them. They actually started putting a business plan together as to what they were going to do when at one Sally graduate as a vet and how there was going to be a cat cafe and a veterinary like a, an office and the, you know, the pet store and the, the groomer and like, yeah, they were actually like drawing and making plans and you know, where the desk is going <laughs> to, and now Ali was going to make money as being a vet. And like, it was quite interesting to see them go because, you know, they grew up in a, in an entrepreneurial home. They've always, you know, seen me doing different kind of businesses and they hear the word business plan, I guess, because they knew, how to do a business plan. <laughs> well, they they know the concept. The kid, kids pick up so much that we're not aware of, which is why I'm going, it's so important to actually talk more openly about money and business and, and things because our kids are learning. And then if we're, if we're trying to hide something or, or we've got a lot of shame around it or we're afraid, they're picking up on all that as well. <laughs> yeah. And you know what I find is like I would like to take more time to do more with them, talk about investments. and all. I mean, they're still young. I haven't done it yet, and I do feel guilty because I think I should spend more time on this a little bit. But, you know, life kind of gets in the way sometimes. But there's still time. There, there's, there's always time. It's never too early or too late. So what are some of the things that you are, you and your wife are actively working on teaching the kids about money? Really, like my main, my main thing is, you know, for them, I want them to realize that you can't have it all. That's just a fact of life for most of us. You can't have it all. So you have to make some tough decisions sometimes. And that's what I want them to learn very early on is you got to make decisions. And with, with your wife, what, what are some of the things that you see her wanting to teach the kids? Um, yeah, she's, she's a little, like, I'm a little bit more of the hard ass. <laughs> <laughs> Every couple needs one. Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely the, the more of a hard ass and, you know, your money's good. Well, sucks to be you. I guess you're not going to the party. <laughs> <laughs> and she's more, well, let's give him a loan. <laughs> so, so there's always a little bit of negotiation that happens there. Um, but yeah, and I think it's good. Like, uh, you know, I'm definitely, my wife is more of a spender than I am and I'm, I'm not a spender. I, I don't need to buy a lot of things. So they see both sides uh, of the equation. And, uh, I mean, neither one of us is extreme either. Like we're pretty balanced. So hopefully we, um, we show good example. But yeah, as they get older, definitely want to get a little bit more into, you know, maybe get them to, and my daughter's probably there already, actually, um, you know, start working on doing a budget. So this is how much money I'm going to have. And if I save this much, this is how much I'll end up with. And yeah, so, so that's something I think that I will be doing soon. So to finish off here, if you can make sure that your kids get Three lessons around money. What are the three things that you want them to learn before they become adults and move out? Three lessons. Uh, one is you have to save money because you don't know maybe something fantastic is going to come tomorrow. And if you've spent it all, you're not getting it. So, you know, always think about that uh, before you go and spend it all. And, um, you know, donate as well, like, you know, whether it's your brother or friends or charity, it's nice to, to, to donate some of what you make. And then the other one is inv invest. 
they're still a little bit young for this. They know that we invest, um, then we invest in their, in their, uh, for their school, the, um, RESP. Thank you. RESPs. And, you know, and then that the government matches some of the money that you put in there. Like, you know, we tell them about that. So just, you know, yeah, like share, don't spend it all and be informed. Well, those are great lessons to be passing on. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking with you, Tammy. Before we leave each other, I would ask all of you listening to please subscribe to and rate my podcast. A review would be most appreciated and feedback is always welcome. Whether it be a comment, future topic suggestions, and or questions you or your kids would like to have answered in the Ask Tammy column, on the financialfund.ca website. Please feel free to check me out on Facebook at Financial Foundation's Children's Books, on Twitter at Financial Fund, and Instagram at Financial.Fun. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Financial Fund Podcast. Join Tammy Johnston again next week. For more information, please visit financialfund.ca.